So today what I want to talk about is PWAs, otherwise known as progressive web apps. And when I first began researching these, I couldn't come across a clear and concise definition of them. So first let me show you what it is, then we will talk about what it is, and then one last time I will show you what it is, but with a bit more detail. So to quickly demo what a PWA is, logged in to twitter.com and my mobile browser Vanadium. And there are two ways to add a progressive web app. The first is you may see a pop-up on the bottom like this, add Twitter to home screen. The second way, if you don't see a pop-up, but the site does support progressive web apps, you can tap the three vertical dots in the upper right-hand corner, and you should see something such as install app. Tap on that. Twitter did a great job with the configuration of their PWA, so you get a nice view of everything that's going on. Some sites aren't as verbose, so it's not as nice looking, but regardless, it'll still work. So we'll go ahead and tap install, add to home screen. And now when we go to the home screen, this is where the magic happens. And honestly, I was extremely impressed the first time I opened a PWA. So when we go and tap on that, we get the nice splash screen. And once that loads, my feed appears just like I'm using the app without actually installing the full Twitter app. So normally if you have a mobile site loaded in your browser, you would get the browser bar at the top and some stuff at the bottom. But this goes into a full screen mode, so it's like you're using a traditional app. So that's what a PWA is. It's an app that's not an app. So I actually began researching PWAs a bit more in depth after a few comments I saw about them. And someone also replied to my first newsletter that I sent out, where I discussed about keeping the apps on your phone simple. And they mentioned how PWAs actually fit in perfect to that principle. So that led me into researching them a bit more and into creating this video. So now going back to the original question, what is a progressive web app? So as I was researching how to best answer this question, I came across this article that described exactly how I felt. Everyone was talking about them, describing them, but there was no clear cut definition. Towards the end of the article, the author quoted something that was said by Alex Russell, and that was, they are websites that took all the right vitamins. So funny enough, after everything that I've read, that seemed to sum it up just right. So now with the general definition out of the way, let me show you the three main things that make something a progressive web app. So the first part is the web app manifest. And to demonstrate that, again, we're back on twitter.com. We right click and then go to inspect. We want to open the application tab. And if a site supports a progressive web app, you're going to see this manifest section. So just to make this a little bit easier to understand, I'm going to open up the manifest.json. Here's our code, and let's paste this inside an IDE. So basically this file describes how the app is going to behave when it's installed on our device. So if we take a look here, we get the description. We have the display setting that's standalone. And what standalone means is when we saw that full screen experience that we had, that's what standalone specifies. We have some icons that are used. When we had the initial install screen, we had some images that were shown. Those are all described here. And then towards the bottom is the other important part, and that is the start URL. And what the start URL says is when you open that progressive web app on your home screen, this is the URL that will be opened. And as we can see here, it's going to be twitter.com. When you're logged in, that's going to show your home feed and that's what you'll see. So that's the manifest. Again, that kind of just describes how the app should be displayed when it's installed on our device and kind of the whole look and feel of the install process. Next is that the app must use HTTPS, confirmed. And then the last part of a progressive web app is a service worker. This is a virtual proxy that sits in your device's browser and acts as a proxy between the PWA on your device and the actual servers of the service you're accessing. One of the main tasks they handle is how to properly cache assets for a website to make them available offline if your device happens to lose network connectivity. So then back on the application tab, if we go to service workers, we can see the service workers that are configured. Besides caching, they can handle other tasks such as controlling network requests, modifying them, receiving push notifications, and serving up custom responses it receives from cache. It's also worth noting that since the service worker is running locally on your device, this can greatly increase the speed as compared to a normal website. So that was a quick overview of these service workers and manifest. If you want to see a little bit more in-depth example in the future, let me know down below in the comments. So as you probably know by now, I like analogies. And with a PWA, the manifest is like the body of a car. It's the look and feel. The service worker is the engine. Without it, the car just doesn't work. And then just to make sure this is a cohesive analogy, HTTPS is like locking the doors. So there's a few security and privacy advantages I came across. 
and the first one is that there are no updates to worry about. The PWA is updated just like refreshing a web page. And since these are all browser-based apps, there's technically no app store you need to worry about to install them. If you've seen my videos about Fdroid and its shortcomings with PWAs, you don't need to worry about that. You could theoretically have no app store installed on your phone and still use them. So if you're going for a minimalistic footprint on your device, to me that's the perfect combination. PWAs also let you use a service without actually having to install an app specific to that service. In the case of Twitter, you're using the service in an app form without actually having to install the Twitter app. So in the past, I've actually used third-party apps written by other developers to access the Twitter service because I didn't want to install the Twitter app. This option isn't great from a security perspective because you're left trusting some third-party developer. And for my threat model, I try to trust the least amount of third parties as possible. And then as far as privacy goes, from everything I've found, I believe that PWAs are less invasive than installing a full-fledged app. You're essentially running a nice-looking web app. If the PWA wants to request access to a photo, such as the Twitter app, that's controlled by the browser permissions. Previously, some individuals have asked me what are some better ways to use social media platforms a bit more privately, and I think PWAs are a great option. Let's say you want to use Instagram. The mobile browser experience is less than ideal, and for those that don't want to install the Instagram app, they could install a third-party app, but again, that's not great from a security perspective. I think that's where a PWA can be an ideal compromise. I also found this site that shows which services have PWAs available. So that can be pretty handy if you're interested in trying out a PWA for a service that you use. I'm also pretty new to using PWAs. So if you have any pros or cons that I might've missed, feel free to leave those down below in the comments. And as always, all links mentioned will be in the description box.